What's up guys, I hope you're having an amazing day. Welcome back to another video, the first one for 2024. And how about we start this video with an unboxing. I got some new pairs of sports shoes. These shoes have nothing to do with the topic of this video, which is what's in my camera bag for 2024, but they do have something to do with this video being my first one for 2024. Last year, but probably also the year before and the year before that, like many of you, I made a goal for myself to go more to the gym and I didn't really manage. But in 2023, I learned something that if you're going after very demanding things and are trying to accomplish a lot of work in the shortest time possible, you don't have to be really unhealthy or very much overweight to notice the effect that the lack of doing sports and lack of training multiple times a week has on those goals. Because I have very high expectations from myself, for this YouTube channel where I wanted to go and for my photography and videography business, I realized that if I'm not in the best shape possible, those plans are gonna take much longer than I first intended. So I wanted to start this year on the right foot and I got myself some new training shoes and I'll try to train and go to the gym as often as I can so I can be really mentally and physically fit to handle all the workload that is needed to make these dreams come true. The perfect way to start this new year is to talk about what's in my camera bag for 2024 and I've never actually done a video like this on this channel. The reason is very simple because I was never really happy about the gear that I had. So I, there wasn't much to talk about. Right now at this point, I'm at the sweet spot where I think I have all the gear that I need for any kind of project that comes my way, that is realistic to come my way in the near future. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what that gear is and what kind of projects I've managed to make with it. Let's get started. thing to talk about is the backpack itself. I'm using the PJY Tech One Mo 2, the 25 liter version camera backpack. I used to have the original one, but with that camera I had an issue because this zipper right here broke, so I couldn't close this pocket anymore and that made it useless. Actually, no, it was on the other side. And so I upgraded to this. And the reason why I stayed with the PGY Tech backpack, I've also made a video about it comparing the two backpacks, is because first of all, I really like the design. It looks really like a high quality, good backpack. Um, this material is really nice when it gets dirty, you can clean it very easily. And also if it snows a little bit or if it's a bit rainy, uh, it can also deal with that. So it doesn't let any water inside and uh, you don't need the cover because it also comes with a cover for those heavy rain situations that you might find yourself in outdoors. 25 liters is generally plenty of space, but especially if you're traveling somewhere that you also need to carry clothes and stuff that might get a bit tight. But with this backpack, the good thing is that with one zipper, you can extend it even further. And I love that feature. You also get this right here, which is a shoulder bag with it. Because I do social media work, like I manage uh, my client's account and I create content for them, mostly for bars and restaurants. Sometimes when I go to them to film some reels, I don't need so much gear. I only need my camera, one or two lenses. And that's where that backpack is very handy because you can just, it's super small, super lightweight. You don't have to carry all of this. If I open it up like that, you will see that it's actually empty inside. And that's because I already took all the gear out and it's laying right here. Everything is on my table, so I will talk about all the different gears one by one. These two pockets are for a laptop and for an iPad. I don't have an iPad, so I only need the laptop pocket. So that brings me to my first piece of gear, which is my laptop. For all the projects that I need, for all the work that I do uh, on YouTube and for my clients, I'm using this Lenovo Legion 5. It has a graphic card from NVIDIA. I will put the name uh, on the screen because I don't remember it. It's not the best laptop. Uh, with the footage from my main camera, it suffers a little bit, like it, I need to render the things before I can work easily, but it works very well for now and I think it's good for 2024. This is where I keep my main camera and I can open this pocket to access it from the outside. I don't have to have access to everything. This is upside down, by the way. Should be holding it like this, probably. I have a place here for a lens. I have some other spots here for batteries or flashes or smaller lenses. 
and then I have all this compartment for other things as well where also my water bottle goes very often. Now let's talk about the good stuff. It is called the camera bag because the main thing about it is the camera. So my main camera for 2024 is the Canon R6 Mark II. I got this camera in the middle of 2023 and I've been very happy with the performance so far. I've shot concerts, I've shot social media content, I've shot YouTube videos with it, I've shot weddings with it. I really like the 6K oversampled 4K video footage that comes out of it. I like that you can shoot in C-Log3 and in 10-bit 4 to 2 colors. And I'm actually shooting with it right now, which is why I don't have it here. My big camera for 2024 is going to be this, the Canon EOS R. I've had this camera for some years now and I use it as my main camera also on this YouTube channel and for my client work but I wasn't very happy with especially with the video footage that was coming out of it it was a bit noisy a bit too soft the 4k had a major crop and that's why I needed to upgrade to the R6 Mark II in December for example I had to film a concert at a theater and I needed this camera as a B cam I just put it in the middle there on a tripod in the middle of the people press record and then keep this as the main angle. And the same thing happened when I was filming an orchestra on the 29th of December. I just put this on the balcony uh, on the back side of the church, uh, left it there on a tripod and I captured everything, uh, the main angle from this. And then the rest I was doing with the R6 Mark II handheld, just changing places all the time. That's the reason why I'm still keeping this camera for 2024. If you ask if it's the best option, then the answer is definitely not, especially when it comes to video work. But does it do its job? Then absolutely yes. I have one third camera right here, which is the Canon EOS 500. This is a film camera. I got it used in August when I was in a trip in Albania because I wanted to start shooting film photography. Because I've learned from experience that if you're not careful with this passion that we have for about photography and videography, you might find yourself using your cameras all the time capturing everything that happens and then looking at the photos, seeing if you like them or not. And if you don't, you recompose. Then you have the option to transfer them to your phone and edit them and then upload them at the same time as well. That is a very risky thing to do because you are never really present in the moment. You're, you're always busy thinking about content and capturing things. And that's where this film camera comes in handy. It only takes a little bit of time in the beginning to find a good composition that you like and then once you press the shutter, it's over, you can move on and be present because, because you don't have an option to review your photos or transfer them or do everything else that you can do with today's mirrorless cameras. The next thing on the list are lenses. My main lens, the one that I use most of the time, which is my workhorse lens. I use it for this YouTube video, I'm using it right now. I use it for my client work, so basically everything. That's the 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens. I really love the image quality that comes out of that lens. I love how fast the autofocus is. So that's definitely staying with me in my camera bag in 2024. Another lens that's very important to me that I really like the image so much is this one. The 70 to 200 millimeter f 2.8. I also got this in 2023, by the way. It's actually a bit difficult to say if this is my favorite or this, the 24 to 70, because it changes sometimes when I use this a lot, then I miss the 24 to 70 and all the nice focal lengths that this lens has, for example, the 35 and the 50. When I use that lens a lot, then I start missing this because this gives a very unique perspective. I love the compression that it produces on my photos and videos and the image quality and the 3D pop, which I've already talked about on this channel. I also have two budget lenses. First, the Nifty 50, which was my first lens after my kit lens, the 24 to 105 f4 to 7.1. So this was the first lens that gave me that shallow depth of field and the nice bokeh. The 16 millimeter, I actually got this when the EOS R was my main camera to film these YouTube videos right in here because the EOS R has a 1.7 times crop in 4K and I wanted to film them in 4K, so I got this 16 millimeter lens to give me a wider field of view. But now that I have the R6 Mark II and it doesn't have a crop in 4K, then I just use the 24 to 70 for it because the image quality from an L series lens is much better than a cheap lens like this. But I'm still keeping it because that's the widest lens that I have and there might be a situation where I'm gonna need to go wider than 24 millimeters. Another very important piece of gear to me is this, the new Rode Wireless Pro. I got it last month and I already made an in-depth video about it, so you can go and check that out if you want. But basically I used to have this before, the Rode VideoMic Pro, and the image quality of that microphone wasn't really good. It was very echoey in this room, even more echoey than it is right now with using the Wireless Pro with this lavalier mic. And sometimes I almost had some video projects where I was going to film an interview 
and I found myself hoping that the project wouldn't happen because I didn't have a good device to record audio with. So I'm very happy to have this now, peace of mind, and also it's great to use for this channel as well. And I'm looking forward to making use of them in 2024. When it comes to lighting equipment, I use this flash, the Godox, what is this, TT6852 for Canon. And I also have this device which is used to trigger the flash off camera. Because sometimes when I do product photography for restaurants, it's better to have the light from a different perspective. And I put it on a stand in a softbox and the photos turn much better like that. If you want to see the technique that I use to take these product photos, and I also made a video about it last year, so make sure to go and check that out. The next thing in my camera bag in 2024 is this, the DJI Mini 2. That's right, I didn't upgrade my drone, but I also don't really need it. I've used this drone so far only for YouTube video projects when I was traveling somewhere or on some clips that I did for this uh, wedding that I shot in September. So I haven't been using this so much. In Vienna, you're not allowed to fly a drone anyways. You have to go outside of the city in order to do that. And I don't go outside the city all that much. So I think this drone does the job so far. I like the footage that comes out of it anyways. It, the 4K footage is really nice. It doesn't have log, but it's fine. It still tells the story. I'm happy with it. The next thing, which is also a piece of gear that I didn't really upgrade for quite a while now, is this. Is the GoPro Hero 10 Black. I'm not super happy about the footage that comes out of this camera, to be honest. It's quite noisy and even though it's 5.7K footage, it's an action camera 5.7K footage. So it's really not comparable with the footage that comes out of the uh, mirrorless cameras, for example. But it's still very helpful for some situations. In this little pouch or whatever that's called, uh, there's also this dual charger for the batteries of the GoPro. There are two extra batteries, of course. I also have this thing where you can put the GoPro right here and then hold it to vlog. But also what I found helpful is because in the summer we were on vacation in Albania and we were swimming in the sea and I wanted to film the underwater world because I really like how it looks. I noticed that if you were to throw the GoPro in the water with this attached to it, then it would float and not sink to the bottom of the sea. Moving on, the next things that I have here, which also I don't always carry these in my backpack, only sometimes when I have to travel abroad, hard drives. This is a two terabyte solid state drive from SanDisk. And when I want to work on a project and I'm on the way, then I just transfer the files in here and then I can edit straight from it because this has faster transfer rates. But when I want to store some footage or some projects that I've shot and not necessarily use them all that much, uh, except for knowing that I have them there when I need them, then I use these uh, hard disk drives because they are cheaper, basically. The next thing that I also got in 2023 for the first time is this. It's the Peak Design Capture Clip 3, I think is what the full name is. So basically you have this plate here, which you can mount to the bottom of your camera and then uh, mount this, for example, on the short shoulder straps of your backpack or in your belt or something. And then the camera, which has this at the bottom, just slides right in and then it doesn't come out anymore. And I find this device super helpful Especially when you want to have some free hands, for example, when you're doing something or where it's winter that you can get cold and you might want to put your hands in your pockets and you can just hang your camera here and then when you need it again, you have immediate access and you don't have to go to the backpack. So I'm super happy about this device. It's really helpful. Another thing that I have in my backpack is this, a memory card holder. I just got this on Amazon. I can just store my memory cards in here and I always know where I have them. It's also waterproof, so I really like it because it can keep your cards not only organized, but also safe, which is really important. The next thing, which is also something I don't really care with me all the time, but it's sometimes in my camera backpack is this uh, travel cleaning set. You have things like uh, air blower to clean the lens from dust. And then there are some wet, wet wipes and stuff like that. I also got this from Amazon. It was a cheap kit from Rolli. Speaking of Rolli, I also finally got a new tripod in November. It's the C5i. For two years in a row, I've been using some of these cheap 20 euros tripods from Amazon. And as my camera setup got bigger from an EOS R with a Nifty 50 to an R6 Mark II, with uh, 24 to 70 or 70 to 200, then that tripod started to become a real issue because it could barely handle the weight, but I was also always afraid that it would break and then ruin my camera. So now I'm finally happy that I got a new tripod two years later. The next thing which is barely ever in my backpack, 
but is always with me and helps me get my job done is this. I'm still rocking the iPhone 14 Pro. I really like the new iPhone 15 Pros because they can finally shoot in log, which the 14 Pro can't. But in any case, when I want to shoot high quality videos or any times that I want to shoot videos anyways, I bring my camera with me. So I didn't really find necessary to upgrade it. But what I use this for mainly is to post things on social media. And also I use it a lot to edit photos on the Lightroom mobile. So this is probably staying with me for the whole 2024 as well. Another thing which you probably saw in the beginning of this video was this pocket knife, especially when you are on places and away from home one of these pocket knives can be very useful. Let me know in the comments below what kind of camera, what kind of lens, what kind of drone you're using to get your projects done in 2024 and also what is your dream camera, your dream lens, what is the gear that you're saving up for and let's just have a deep conversation about it in the comments down below like real gearheads that we all are. That was it for me guys, if you like this video make sure to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel so that we see each other in the future. I'm super excited about what 2024 is going to bring for us and for this channel, what new things I'm going to learn and all the experiences that I'm going to make and also share with you. I wish you all a happy new year, a happy 2024 and I hope you manage to reach all the goals and all the plans that you have set for yourself for 2024. I'll see you in the next one.